Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another thing, another thing where I talk about things, things, another, uh, yes. Anyway, today we're talking about Star Wars. Star Wars games, campaigns, role-playing, stuff like that. And, uh, anyway, I have been in three Star Wars campaigns and they have all been disasters. They, uh, I mean, they were spread out on different, different years. But the very first Star Wars campaign that I ever played was just after Children of the Sandler. And this was actually really interesting because Sandler taught us to be incredibly fearful and mistrustful of the GM. And this was probably one of the better... For, for as bad as Sandler's sessions were, this is probably one of the better lessons that I ever learned from playing with Sandler as the boss. Was that when the GM hands you like a gift, and it looks really good, or it looks tempting, or you want to go out and kind of look at it, just leave it be. The best thing to do is usually never to take the bait, because the bait is always terrible. And, and the fact is, is that a lot of times your magical sword of plus one, or whatever, this or that, it tends not to be that good of a reward anyway. Like, you won't really want it when it comes right down to it. It's, it's, it adds up gradually over time, maybe, but you, as you're playing, tend not to notice how good this, this you know, enchanted item would be. Unless it's just way overpowered, but if the campaign calls for that, then you will have to get that item, or you'll have to come up with a more clever way of doing things, and, and the latter is actually more fun. So, with that in mind, the first Star Wars game that I ever got into, it was actually run by like a 13 year old. Because what had happened is, uh, is my friend Alex had, uh, had a brother, a younger brother, and he was about 13 at the time, I think. He might have even been 12, I, I don't remember what age they were, but they were definitely that age where they were starting to get kind of independent, kind of willful, and uh, and anyway, his little brother had a bunch of friends, and one of them wanted to run a Star Wars campaign. And the, the problem was is that they had to run the campaigns at, uh, at, at Alex's house, and I can't remember why it was that we got involved. I remember once or twice it was just to kind of help him manage and organize the game. It might have been something like, uh, like we just had more experience with, with role-playing. And uh, we might have done it. We might have done it just because we liked role playing. But anyway, though, so Alex and I, both being a little bit older, I think we were about like 16 or 17 at the time. I can't remember. We both sat down. We created a duo where we were smugglers, and I played this race that didn't have like a mouth, so I didn't, I couldn't speak. I spoke through uh, uh, hand signals. I had six fingers though, and so I knew I needed a protocol droid that could interpret the hand signals, or also Alex's character could do it. Alex's character was the muscle, and also the pilot. And then I was the, uh, the, I was actually the mouth, ironically enough. I was the voice. So what we would do, our team, was that he would do a lot of the grunt work, and then I would do a lot of the sales work and kind of manage the money, and then we just split everything 50-50 because it was an equal partnership, and that was how that worked. So uh, we had that team, but I remember starting off, uh, the GM, he goes, because he's like 13, he goes, uh, I want everyone to be level 14. And I don't really play D&D &D very often, so to me, I have no idea. Like, level 14, you get all these different abilities and everything. Like, you get these, they call them feats, if you're not familiar. And so every feat you collect, you're probably more familiar, if you've ever played uh, KOTOR, then you might be more familiar with that. Like, every, every other time you level up, you get this ability, and it'll make you attack faster, or you can jump across the battlefield, or you can, uh, you know, eat in the middle of battle to... I regenerate health or something. I don't know. There's a bunch of really weird, weird things that you can take. Like I, I've, I've played games and I just had like a list of feats out in front of me and, and like perks and feats and you get just the most bizarre stuff. Some of it is like incredibly situational. So it was just totally daunting to look at this idea of like, here's a level 14 character and you'll do this. So uh, Alex and I kind of, we, we were like, we don't want to do that. We're just going to be like level one characters. And so, the, you know, this kid, he's like, he's like, are you sure? Because we're all going to be level 14. And we were like, yeah, we'll just be level 1. Because <laughs> our whole plan was to be tenacious and to, kind of, and to kind of run things to keep the game on track a little bit. Which proved to be an impossible task. Uh, yes. So anyway, uh, he, eventually, he eventually considered this and we just refused to be higher than level 1. We were like, we were like there's really no point. We don't really want to be high level characters because we just want to enjoy the game. We don't, we don't care how strong we are just so long as we have a good time. So he eventually decided to scale everyone else down to like level four, which is still quite a bit bigger than level one uh, in the general scale of things. I think it's, I, I, like I said, I don't play it a lot, but your health scales as you go up and you get like a few more attributes, more skills and everything else. 
And what wound up happening was that everyone but us, there was, a, there was about like five or six players, Alex and I were the only two players who opted not to be Jedi. And we got no bonuses for this. We just, you know, just like, all right, guys, here's your, here's your thing to be Jedi. And we we're like, no, nah, no, nah, we're not going to be Jedi. And they're like, why? We we're like, well, because they're force sensitive. And every time they do stuff, they have to worry about the force and whether or not they're being balanced or you know, the light side and the dark side. Like, we're just smugglers. We just steal stuff and we sell it. We smuggle it. We, I think we were smuggling spice. Like, we were, we were like, if you got arrested, then there was a big fine. And it wasn't like one of those things where you went to prison. But we established our backstory really well. And of course, all the young teens had no backstories whatsoever. They were just a ragtag bunch of Jedi that were traveling together. And like one or two of them were Sith Lords. I don't remember why. But what happened is right away, one of the kids had to go. Like he finished his character, he did everything, and then he had to go. He'd be back the next day. So the GM... Uh, in typical fashion for bad GMing, decides to take over and roleplay this guy's character while he's gone. It was one of the Sith Lords. It was one of the Sith Lords. So what happened was, on our very first session, we're just kind of farting around in our in our smuggling ship. Our, they're like, it's going to be the fastest, you know, the Millennium Falcon, Ebon Hawk, or whatever. They're like, it's going to be the fastest. And we're like, no. No, 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 no. It's a freight ship. And besides, we're pretty sure that Han Solo was full of crap. I don't think the Millennium Falcon really was that fast. He lied a lot. So, so yes, yeah, so we were like, no, 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 it's just a, just a freight ship. It's like, there's no, there's no fastest ship, it's just a freight ship. That was another one. They were like, well, you get this, you get this, you can get this stealth assassin suit. And we were like, no, 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 no. We're smugglers, smugglers, low profile, inconspicuous. Uh, so the first thing we ran into was a stealth capable warship that had all the Jedi on it. <laughs> on the Jedi. And their ship was chocked full of like high tech weaponry and like gadgets that were illegal in like every quadrant in the solar system and everything else. Because that's what the kids wanted to play with. That's what these young guys wanted to play with. So they got out and they introduced themselves to us and, and one of the Sith Lords. Oh, that's right. One of them also played an Ewok, but he was our mechanic. And he was like dual wielding pistols and stuff like that. And we we're like, what? All right, whatever, you know, like our mechanic dual wields pistols, that's fine. That's a good mechanic ability. So, so the Jedi get off, and, and one of them's like a, like a really pure Jedi, and one of them's like a Sith, and the other one is the, the missing in action character that the GM has taken over. So, we start to talk, and uh, we think the Jedi are the police, and so we're just, we're just like, oh, hi, officers, you know, how's everything going? You know, just doing our freight missions, uh, and, and they're really nice to us, and they're like, oh, it seems our engines have stalled. Do you think we can hitch a ride, and we'll bring in some of our stuff? And so we went in there to look, and, and then we saw all this illegal stuff. We were like, you've got, like, like a uh, man-eating scarab beetle things in a jar. What the crap? Well, what is this? Aren't you guys the police? And, uh, and what was funny was that the Jedi character hadn't taken this stuff. This was, this was the, the Sith Lords that had wanted this crap on the ship. So he's like, he's like, uh... I don't know. And so the GM Sith Lord attacked us at this point, which devolved into a horrible scuffle. We actually ran back to our ship and then took cover. And uh, and by use of cover, for whatever reason, the GM decided that, that the Jedi, the Sith Lord, would be strong enough to just, like, take us head on. So he walks out into the middle of the room, and I'm pretty sure that we shot him until he nearly died from, like, blood loss or something like that. Then we took his lightsaber and we chucked it out the airlock which caused it to break for some reason into a power crystal, which we then just left in the airlock. We decided not to touch it. Uh, in fact, the, one of the things that we resolved to do, it turned out the planet we were going to was run by Sith, Sith for some... Yeah. So we decided that we were going to uh, hand over the Sith Lord that tried to kill us and say like, oh, we found this Sith Lord and he attacked us and there's this crystal in the in the airlock if you guys want it and we will give it to you for free because we are terrified like we don't know and that was one of those like we we had a long talk about the sith thing like do we do we tell the sith do we should we tell the sith i don't want this thing on our ship this has to go like this will kill us this will kill us so we were probably going to walk into that trap but what eventually happened was the character who was playing the jedi broke down in tears he went outside to cry for a while uh, then the kid who was running the the Sith Lord who lost his lightsaber came back and he was pissed and That was the end of the game That was my first ever Star Wars game really kind of a shame because we put so much work into the characters But that is what happens when you let uh, a 13 year old kid who's never run a game before in his life run a game It doesn't it doesn't tend to last very long you make a few a few missteps and then you have to try again next time 
So, yes. The second time I played in one of those games, it was played in a Star Wars game, it was with grown adults. And this is, this is one of these things where, like, the teens were bad, but you haven't, you haven't, like, played a bad game until you sit down with an adult who never grew out of being a kid. And this is something that we ran into, is there was a guy, and I'm, I'm not going to give his name, but let's say his name is Satan. So Satan, Satan uh, comes to games every now and then, and I've played a couple times with Satan. And what Satan will usually do is he'll design a character, and this character will be all over the place. He like he's got katanas, he's got like sniper rifles, revolvers just for backup. Uh, he's got all the most powerful spells in the game, and you know that he hasn't designed his character correctly. He's fudged all the numbers. He's min maxed the hell out of it. The points don't add up, and it doesn't make sense. But everyone lets the guy, everyone lets Satan make the character, because Satan will will not he will he will pull every emotional trick in the book to get this character to go through if you tell him no on any of it there will be anger there will be crying he will go outside he will come back and shout at people it becomes one of those things you just you can't function if you try to do anything but just roll with what he wants to do. And we have so many stories about role-playing with Satan. He was a friend of a friend. And I I just, I don't know how, I, I don't I don't understand it because it seemed like none of us liked Satan, but someone who would show up all the time, like would just be like, oh, you know, we're all gonna play it. We're gonna have this guy and that guy and that, and then Satan would show up. And we'd just be like, oh, Satan, good to see you again, buddy. So Satan, yes. Satan was in a Star Wars campaign once, and actually this was again, Alex and I, uh, Alex often be, I used to roleplay with Alex all the time, so this was just one of those things, we went down to the game store, we would play, throughout high school it was always me, Alex, and a bunch of the other guys, um, but Alex was the guy who, who tended to be, he tended to organize stuff uh, more often and as far as this was concerned. So Alex and I said, hey, there's a Star Wars game going on, and he invited me to come down, and he said, let's try that smuggling team duo again. I'll be the muscle, you be the voice, and, uh, and I think... But, but this time we changed it. We were like, uh, uh, only now I'll work on hardware and you work on software and we'll be shipjackers instead of smugglers. And we said, we said to ourselves like, oh yeah, that's kind of an interesting concept. You really don't see that a lot. And it might be kind of a niche ability that, that you wouldn't expect. And aside from that, we just like the social aspects of role playing. So we don't mind too much when we're not very good combatants if we can't contribute a lot to the, to the fighting because it's not a big deal. So we go and we make our characters and of course Satan was there. And lo and behold, we found out that Satan was playing an astromech droid. But not just one astromech droid, four astromech droids. I, I had to pause and think, it might, have been, it might have been five. Four or five astromech droids. We never ran into all of them at once. But Satan had not only created five character sheets, and they were all, they were all linked. Like, they all had the same brain. So if one astromech droid knew something, the other knew something else. And they were, they were all as strong as characters. So functionally speaking, Satan was controlling, like, five player-level characters. And through this, he had managed to dominate the entire ship. You couldn't do anything. I think he also had his brain in the ship. So he could watch you through the cameras. He could do everything there was. So we started playing, and right away, we were under Satan's evil thumb. We could not do anything without Satan approving it. And it immediately just pissed us off. We couldn't figure out how anyone had gotten this far in the game. And, uh, and part of it was because I think Satan's brother was there. And Satan's brother was just willing to tolerate Satan's crap because he was, they were family. And that's what you have to do when you're related to the devil. So we decided to take our shipjacking abilities. And the party left. They left us on the ship. We told them we'd guard the ship. So we went to hijack the thing. Oh, I forgot to mention, Satan's droids also had flesh implants, and that allowed them to get access to the Force. So they had Force powers. So we decided to hijack the ship while Satan and, like, two or three of his other characters were away. So uh, it, it went about as well as you would imagine, is we had specced our characters specifically for shipjacking, and somehow Satan had specced his droids at that time to be counter ship jackers. So Alex went and he took his character to the software and he started to hack into the systems and try to install like malware that would give him access to the ship. And so Satan goes, no, no, no. He goes, I preemptively changed the entire operating system of the ship. So there's no way that they could crack this, this operating system and get inside and do all this stuff. 
So the GM goes, oh, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Go ahead and take a roll, say, and then compare it against uh, against Alex's roll. So Alex took a roll, he rolled really decently, and then Satan took a roll, and it was one above what Alex rolled. And this was funny because none of us got to see the die that Satan rolled, because he would roll and then pick up the die really quick. This was how he roleplayed. And later we looked at his character sheet, and it turned out that none of his characters had a high enough uh, skill to actually stop what we were doing. But he lied about the roll, and so he defeated that. So I went to go and ha uh, hotwire the ship, and Satan goes, No, wait a minute, I actually rewired the ship the last time we were in port, to prevent any attempt at shipjacking, because I knew that this kind of thing could happen. And so we said, really? You, you rewired the hardware components of your entire ship and installed a new OS, and this didn't cost you a dime. Like, this, this didn't have any kind of financial investment. And Satan goes, yep, I'm just that good at hardware stuff. And I remember I rolled crap on the, on the hot wiring, so there was really no skin off my nose there. But uh, after that, after our failed attempt, Satan came around and between Force Powers and all of his droids' arsenal, because his droids naturally had like high-powered stun and kill weapons on board, they, they drove around and they stunned us and, and uh, threw us off the ship. So that was the second ever Star Wars role-playing game that I played. Did not end well. The third role-playing game, the third Star Wars role-playing game, uh, was probably the best out of the three. This was actually with guys, uh, while I was in college, I just went down to the local game store and I just met some guys and they invited me to play with them because I was, I was friendly. I was like, hey guys, how you doing? Uh, you know, my name is Greg and, and they introduced themselves. And so we set up a game and the problem that I ran into there was that uh, these guys and myself, uh, they, were, they were a bit older than us and uh, Alex was there for this too, but I invited Alex this time because Alex was also up in that area. Um, and anyway though, they were a little bit older and they had a slightly different mentality about what role playing was really all about. They were really more into the combat stuff. They kind of wanted to do dice rolls and spec their characters for things and and uh, I've never really liked that. So, I made a character based on Cat, uh, mixed in with Jizzy Cat Cat from Red Dwarf mixed with Jizzy B from Grand Theft Auto of uh, San Andreas. And so what did we do? Alex kind of showed up and then gave up right away. It was He, he went for like one or two sessions. Uh, and I don't remember him doing much of anything because the problem that we ran into was that we just got bored. So uh, I went down there and I remember I gave Cat like really good pistol skills. But aside from that, I made him a fence. As they were like trying to get me to choose this skill. And they were like, you could be a soldier, you could be this, you could be that. And they gave me all these combat classes. And I was like, I want to be a fence. Like I want to sell, uh, you know, I want to be like a pawn shop guy you know i'm gonna sell things that i buy from other people and it's all like illicit goods this is what i'm gonna do so i did that and the gm really wasn't prepared for it he you know he didn't seem to know how to handle it because i don't think that they did very social role playing ever so instead what wound up happening is i just wound up gridlocked as i fought just fighting stormtrooper after stormtrooper waves and waves of stormtroopers like and i wasn't the only one there was one other guy who kept getting bored and i remember he kept doing things he's like he's like instead of shooting the next stormtrooper why don't i shoot the door and see if i can cause it to jam shut by destroying the electronics and so we would get into that then where like we would start taking called shots to the door instead of like shooting the because there were too many stormtroopers it was ridiculous so that happened, and then we got into space combat. I remember we spent like one whole day at space combat, and I was, like I said, I was in college. I had stuff to do, so I was kind of like, you know, this was my precious free time, and it just, it just wound up being something I kind of quit going to him. I just kind of quit showing up to the sessions because I could only kill so many stormtroopers before, the, you know, before it just, just got tiring. And that was a real shame because Star Wars, it's a really rich adventure kind of setting. Like when you know what you're doing, there's a lot of stuff going on. There's basically like space wizards, you know, all these soldiers, laser blasters, droids, you know, monsters, you know, faraway places, exotic locations, women dressed up like in a bra and underwear like Leia was, you know. Not a lot of those. Twi'leks, I guess, do that a lot. But none of those things were in this game, so it was very boring. And, and yes, those are all my experiences with Star Wars campaigns. All of them ended in disaster. It was rather sad. But, uh, but someday, though, someday maybe I might play a fun Star Wars campaign. There's always a lot of potential with that sort of thing. I really like the setting, despite, uh, despite when you get to the extended universe, you find out it's very silly a lot of the time. Some of it's really neat. Some of it's really just kind of, kind of, kind of dumb. But, uh, but that's okay, because, because that's what happens when you have a lot of different writers all kind of writing their own uh, bizarre stuff. So, anyway, that is my story for today. I will catch you guys later.